Kieran Home Affairs Department boss Michael Pozzullo has been forced to stand aside and his future appears in grave doubt after he was referred by his minister to the Public Service Commissioner after the leaking of more than a thousand encrypted messages that he sent to a friend of then Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Scott Briggs. At this time, between the years 2017 and 2021, Mr Briggs was a lobbyist and was vying for home affairs contracts. Last night I had the interaction with uh, the Minister and with uh, Minister for Home Affairs, uh, Claire O'Neill, and with other ministers as well, including the Minister for Immigration and Citizenship, uh, Andrew Giles. This morning I spoke with Minister O'Neill. Uh, Minister O'Neill has spoken with Mike Pizzullo, the Secretary of the Department of Home Affairs this morning, and has asked that he stand aside whilst this investigation takes place. Uh, he has agreed to stand aside. That action is appropriate. We'll await uh, the findings of the investigation, which we will uh, expedite. We have a Cabinet meeting uh, this afternoon where, no doubt, uh, I'll be able to get uh, further reports uh, about that. Uh, we'll make uh, no further comment. Sounds in trouble in terms of his job, doesn't he? The leaked messages appear to show Mr Pizzullo was trying to be a player behind the scenes in the political process, which senior public servants shouldn't do. The correspondence with Scott Briggs, who basically had regular free access to Scott Morrison at the lodge and at Parliament House, despite not being a member of Mr Morrison's staff, shows the Home Affairs head acting outside the normal role of a senior public servant. It was revealed on the 60 Minutes program last night. As the government went to war with itself, there was a frantic exchange of messages between Liberal Party insider Scott Briggs and Home Affairs boss Michael Pizzullo, who wanted his intentions known. If Dutton is out, give me Taylor or Tudge. You need a right winger in there. People smugglers will be watching. Agree. Please feed that in. Will do. Brandis's behaviour is getting worse. OK, I fed that into the PM. I think things may be getting closer to a Brandis departure. George seems to be trying to negotiate a stay of execution. If that were to occur, he would have to change his mindset and behaviours about home affairs. He is in complete denial. Days later, Pizzullo messaged Briggs a news story announcing Brandis's resignation. Have I ever let you down? Mr Briggs was part of a group bidding to run a privatised visa system in this country for $1 billion. The government eventually in 2020 abandoned that visa privatisation idea. But as Sky News revealed in December 2021, Mr Briggs did help the DPG firm, which he was involved in, get a... $80,000 contract out of Mr Pizzullo's department without tender to help set up a quarantine system for private industry during COVID. At the time, Sky News did that story on the firm that Mr Briggs had set up to do this, Quarantine Services Australia. The Prime Minister, Mr Morrison's office, and Mr Pizzullo said that the decision to give that contract without tender was Mr Pizzullo's and had nothing to do with the PM. But let's talk about this phone call that Briggs and Home Affairs Secretary Michael Pizzullo then appear on with several business council members in relation to this project in September. One of the attendees on that call has told me that Mr Briggs spoke on the call and Mr Pizzullo said on the call words to the effect of, this is a really important project for the PM and Treasurer and the Government. Mr Pizzullo was quizzed on this at Senate Estimates. He said he did not recall saying similar words. Mr Pizzullo, did you attend and speak at a Business Council of Australia event on 17 September 21st? Uh, I'd have to check my diary, but there's something... Uh, there's something ringing. Um, there's a bell of recall ringing around that time, yes. Did you tell attendees at this event that, quote, Quarantine Services Australia is very important to the Prime Minister? No, I don't recall saying that at all. 
Mr. Pizzou, let's just assume that Senator I have Keneally, confirmation from people in time. the room who told me that those were your words. I doubt very much I would have said that because uh, I have no uh, view about the Prime Minister's attitude to QSA any more than I have uh, the view of any minister. This is an industry solution for what is going to be as states bring their hotel quarantine program to an end, and you wait and see what happens when that tide goes out, to a industry-funded scheme to the extent that quarantine is going to be required to deal with the inevitable takeoff and arrival of students, skilled workers and, and the like. Despite the fact that QSA was set to charge up to $12,000 per head, it was billed during the call as a not-for-profit. Scott Briggs is friends with Scott Morrison and Stuart Robert, the senior minister. Stuart Robert had designs on the Home Affairs portfolio, but it went instead to his Gold Coast ally, Very Karen much, Andrews. Briggs, so but no. Mr Pizzullo told Senate estimates that it was his decision to give the work to the Briggs Gazard organisation. He reiterated this on Friday at subsequent estimates. Um, the $80,000 contract they had, which you can refresh my memory, um, Mr Pizzullo, that was not an open tender process, that correct. was an invitation. It was a, it was a direct, direct selection. Direct yes. selection by the Department of Home correct. Affairs. That is right. The PM's office has come back to me on this and said, quote, this is a matter for the Department of Home Affairs. The Prime Minister has had no involvement in the engagement of anyone involved in developing this proposal, and this proposal is being handled entirely by the Department of Home Affairs. So he made a direct selection with a contract to Mr Briggs and his mates at the time that he is talking to him about these political matters. Now, Briggs had influence with Scott Morrison and was also previously close to Malcolm Turnbull. To indicate how close Scott Morrison was to Scott Briggs, when it came to doing the numbers against Malcolm Turnbull and Peter Dutton in 2018, sources have told me Scott Briggs was involved in those numbers together with Alex Hawke and Ben Morton. Mr Pizzullo would have seen Mr Briggs as someone who had influence at the very top level of government. It appears to some extent Mr Pizzullo might have been being played by Mr Briggs. The Home Affairs Chief appears to have not taken into account that he should not be dealing with someone this way when they were bidding for Home Affairs work. This is the statement Claire O'Neill put out at six o'clock this morning. I'm aware of reporting regarding communications between Mr Michael Pizzullo and Mr Scott Briggs. Last night I referred this matter to the Australian Public Service Commissioner, Dr Gordon De Brewer, and we know a Linnell Briggs, no relation, has now been put in charge of that inquiry and Mr Pizzullo has been forced to stand aside. Now, in these messages that have been leaked, Pizzullo gives Briggs a scathing review of then top public servant Martin Parkinson, saying he isn't up to it and that he lacks self-awareness shoving the knife into his public service colleagues, including the well-regarded Secretary of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Martin Parkinson. Sorry to say, Parkinson isn't up to it. Martin P's insecurities don't need to be fed. He is entirely lacking in self-awareness. Now, rather uncomfortably, Martin Parkinson is head of the government's migration review, set to be released by the Home Affairs Minister next week. Opposition leader Peter Dutton was the Minister for Home Affairs. He defended Mr Pizzullo today but said the investigation was up to the government. The Minister's obviously uh, announced that she's referred it to, to the Public Service Commissioner, so that's a matter for uh, investigation now. Um, I'll say in relation to Mr Pizzullo, uh, he was my secretary when I was in Home Affairs. Uh, I found him to always be professional. Uh, I found him particularly as a, a person who had served both a Labor government uh, and a Liberal government. Obviously, they've got an investigation underway, but if the Prime Minister doesn't have confidence in Mr Pizzullo, he should say so. Now, a former high-ranking official in the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Stephanie Foster, has been made acting head of Home Affairs, and there's speculation she could get the job permanently, Kieran. Yeah, indeed. Andrew, before we move on to the COVID inquiry, whenever you see a scenario like this, a, a secretary or a political figure stood aside pending an inquiry, it's very rare for them to return to the top job, particularly given the explosive nature of what we're talking about here. It appears this will be the end of what has been a long and what many in the political world, certainly Peter Dutton is of that view, that he's been an effective 
public servant, but clearly one, in this case, that appears to have overstepped the mark, Andrew. Yes, I think I said earlier, it looks like he was played to some extent. He, he had a belief that he could further himself, further whatever goals he had for the government through this character, Scott Briggs. But this guy really, uh, a bit of a, he was a lobbyist. And worst of all, he was yeah. he was going for contracts with the department. I mean, it, it is a conflict. It is a massive issue. And I think, you know, this story we did in December 2021 will have a big bearing in this because he and his, his, his lobbyist colleagues actually got a contract without tender that Mr Pizzullo admitted in Senate evidence he was responsible for. How can you excuse that? He should have distanced himself from Briggs if he was going to be adjudicating on that matter or their visa bid.